everyone. Um, thank you for uh, taking the time um, this afternoon to <clears throat> listen to uh, my webinar. Um, hopefully you guys will find something uh, insightful, uh, learn something, and uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, it's two o'clock, so um, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Tan Nguyen. I'm the uh, division uh, manager for um, Regal TLS segment. You know, so threshold laser scanning. Uh, today is the 31st, and uh, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, just a sorry, just a quick introduction um, about our, our company, uh, Regal. Um, as, as, as you've heard of us before or not. Uh, we, we are the global leader um, in designing and manufacturing of uh, laser measurement systems. You know? uh, so what that means is that uh, we focus, and our focus for the last 40 plus years has solely been on uh, laser scanners, 2D systems, 3D systems, airborne, uh, mobile, unmanned, uh, industrial laser scanning, and of course, my favorite segment <laughs> is uh, terrestrial laser scanning. Uh, 250 employees globally, uh, I'm located in North America in beautiful Winter Garden. That's is where our brand new facility uh, just got built uh, beginning of 2021 um, here in Winter Garden, Florida. Uh, here we serve, uh, we carry out uh, sales, training, support, uh, services, um, and, 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 and a little bit of uh, uh, market research for the U.S. Uh, market. But of course, we have offices and headquarters in China, Japan, UK, strictly placed and positioned uh, throughout the world. So uh, if you ever need to get a hold of us for anything, uh, please uh, just visit our website and uh, contact the appropriate um, location and we'd be glad to help you and answer any questions you may have, okay? So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Um, digital twin, um, this term came about to me in about five years ago, 2017. And I didn't really know what it was, right? So I thought it was just comparison to to BIM, and and you know, of course, in the same nature, it is kind of like it, it is kind of like BIM, right? So you're creating a digital uh, representation of the existing asset or the facility, uh, or even an object, right? So it doesn't have to be a, a a facility, and more importantly, it doesn't have to be a man-made object or an asset or a facility. It could be natural environment it could be infrastructure it could be um civil engineering um so it doesn't have to be a facility or a or or or, or an engine of an airplane it can literally be anything right so you have to really take this perspective of digital twin a little bit further than than what the uh, the the original definition could be or used to be right so and we've have taken that a little bit further and that's why i want to show you some example on how digital twin can be utilized and uh, digitize and model in a urban environment, natural environment, but also a uh, facilitated, sorry, man-made environment too as well. So these are just definitions that I've gotten online and I've put together myself. So a digital twin is a virtual model designed to accurately reflect a physical object, right? So not just a physical object, but can also be a natural environment too as well. Uh, a continuous update model of an asset or a facility. So in order to make a digital twin, um, uh, useful and 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 to be accurate you really have to continue these updates right you have to continue to scan the area you have to continue to scan the facility because facility changes land changes natural environment changes so there's always be continuous changes throughout the uh lifespan of that object or the asset or the facility and of course the connection between a digital world and the real world i think that's the exciting part right so how do we connect the real world with a, a digital world and, and more importantly, the accurate information that we provided, the better connection we make with the digital world versus to the world world. These are just some of the important things that I find uh, why digital twin is important, right? Of course, there are many other ways and many other aspects of why uh, creating a digital model or digital twin is important. Yeah, asset management, right? So asset management has to be at the top of my list. So to have a digital replica of the existing environment you can really manage that facility very, very easily and very accurately and very efficiently too as well. So you, with this type of data set, you can tag it, you can mark it up, and you can put a date on there, and you can put an alarm and a trigger on there to where that, hey, if this, if this piping or this fitting or this uh, um, object only lasts for X amount of years, 
or X amount of time and it has an expiration date, you can trigger an alarm so that, you know, your management or your um, um, or the, the guy that's in charge of the facility can, can then change out that fitting or that object um, an X amount of time uh, because you have all the information uh, tagged with that specific object. Uh, facility and equipment maintenance, right? So stuff gets worn out. Um, you know, if you have a, a large 20,000 square foot facility, there's going to be filter that needs to be changed. There's going to be, um, you know, everything has to be maintenance inside of a building. And to have all those information at the tip of your finger, uh, you can really make this decision efficiently and accurately and pr preservation, right? So uh, heritage preservation, I, I, that, that's a huge thing. Uh, I think that's very important. Uh, because some of these old facilities and old uh, monuments um, you don't really have drawings for those anymore. You don't, well, there, there probably never was anyways, uh, or there was and it's probably lost. So it's important to document all these heritage uh, facilities and locations and, and monuments so that, you know, if anything cash traffic happens to it, uh, you can always replicate it and you can always rebuild it. Um, so that's important to me. Um, and easy and fast way to access information for quick decision making. Just give an example. So if there was a digital twin, a digital replica of the recent um, collapse of the hotel, sorry, of the apartment complex down south of Miami. Now, if everything was documented properly, uh, you know, they would have known that the foundation in it was bad, that, that needed it to be uh, fixed and uh, updated. Um, accordingly, right? According to the code or specification, or if it was syncing, we can monitor it. Um, yeah, so having access to an easy access to information to make decisions, I think that's key for the digital twin. And sharing information internally and also externally too as well. So having this information is good, as though it's, it's only as good as you can access it, and it's only as good as you can share it, right? So if you can't share it, if you can't access it efficiently and effectively, so you can't make the decision uh, effectively and efficiently accordingly. And of course, design construction. So we've been in a lot of involved in construction. And I'm still trying to grasp my finger on how do you document it. Maybe my next presentation on how can we apply digital twin to a brand new um, ongoing construction development site. And, and that's something unique because we have a lot of data from that from our existing building. So when we built our new headquarters here in Winter Garden, we scan it from the top to bottom at every single construction phase, right? So we scan it when the land was rural. We scan it when the vegetation was cleared out, the level. We scan it when the footer was dug out and all the um, and all the main pipe pipe uh, plumbing was put in. We put in. Uh, we scan it when all the conduits was put in. We scan it when the foundation was poured, when the tilt wall construction was poured up. Uh, we scan it when the roof came up. So we have every single detail information of our current headquarters here in Winter Garden. So maybe in my next presentation, how can we utilize digital twin? Uh, to 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 for for uh, construction development and construction building. So, and uh, the last thing I think the future for digital twin is creating a, a accurate AR and VR, right? Augmented reality and virtual reality. So augmented reality it only happens if the information is already there. So by documenting these um, stages of construction or stages of building or stages of of of, of, of facility, we can really make an, a, a highly accurate augmented reality. Um, capture and also a virtual reality uh, capture too as well. So I think that's where the future. Um, I know augmented reality is already here and virtual and virtual reality is already here, but I don't think it's completely uh, being used and utilized yet. And mainly because uh, we simply don't have the 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 the, the detailed uh, information model uh, that that we need to generate. So I think over time, the near future. Or maybe in the next couple of years, I think augmented reality will play a lot better play with the, in, which involves digital twin too as well. So, um, so in order to collect these information, in order to make a digital twin, you got to have sensors, right? You got to have passive sensors. You got to have uh, active sensors. Uh, of course, active sensors are lidar technology, radar, lasers, lidar. Those are our active sensors. But then, you know, there's also uh, passive sensors too as well, which are photogrammetry. And I don't know how well photogrammetry plays into a digital twin. Uh, but I know for for a fact, uh, active sensors such as ladder technology plays greatly into a digital twin. Now, the reason I'm showing you this picture is because, of course, I work for Regal, so I'm going to only show Regal systems on here. Um, but yeah, I, there is no one system that does all. And I'm going to show you some examples later on so that you really, if you really want to capture a, a, a detailed and robust digital twin model, make a group of digital twin model, you really got to have multiple sensors and multiple platforms 
Uh, and I'll tell you, there's no one sensor that can, you can even have a threshold sensor, which is probably the most capable of making a digital twin and the, probably the most used to making a digital twin. But when you're talking about a rural environment, a natural environment, you know, maybe an airborne sensor would make more sense or an unmanned system system make more sense. But if you want to capture the highway and make a digital twin of your highway infrastructure, of course, a mobile sensor then will make sense too as well. So that's my whole point here. The whole message here is that, um, you know, there are a wide variety of instruments and platforms that must be used, that has to be used in order to create a detailed digital twin of an environment or a facility or an object as such, yeah? So you can see we have airborne sensors, uh, mobile sensors, airborne sensors, uh, and then terrestrial sensors, and of course, um, unmanned sensors too as well. So uh, here's a, a good example of, of, of what uh, uh, data fusion from all these sensors can bring into a digital twin model, right? So you can see here, what you see here is a black and white scan, uh, which only consists of a um, terrestrial laser scanner, which is TLS. So yeah, you can catch up very detailed information. Of course, you're gonna have that great range, but when you look into a larger facility, you know, when you're looking into like a 20 acres or something, you're gonna have to bring some different type of systems in there to be able to catch all that information, right? So having a terrestrial scanner scanning 20 acres, is not feasible. You just don't wanna do it. It's just simply not feasible. That's why when I, when I say, you know, you have to use different platforms for different application, but in a digital twin environment, I think it is safe to say uh, that I think you should consider using multiple platforms. Here's another example of uh, airborne laser sensors, unmanned laser sensors, and mobile laser scanning and terrestrial laser scanning is all combined. So you can see a wide variety of error, which consists of an airborne system. But when you get into a more detailed area, you get a ULS system below altitude and more detail. And of course, your infrastructure, such as your road and your um, uh, your, hi your highways and your power lines, would, would would be more feasible to using a laser, a, a, mo a mobile laser scanner. Then of course, terrestrial laser scanner, you can do indoor, outdoor, uh, small areas and high detail of areas, right? So combining all this air, combining all this data is one thing and, 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 and making it usable and making it valid and making it so that you can create a digital and accurate digital twin is another thing. And I've done a PowerPoint, sorry, I've done a webinar on data fusion. So if, if I get a lot, uh, of, of request to do another webinar on data fusion, I certainly will. But it's one of my favorite tough subjects to do um, last year was data fusion. I thought it was so interesting and it was so easy for me to do because we have all the platforms out there. So I'll be able to generate data uh, really on the fly. Uh, here's a, a good a good uh, 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 detailed view of when you combine all this data together, you know, not only it has to uh, uh, be accurate, but you know it has to meet certain tolerance, right? So you can't just combine this data set together and and send it to a guy that models it and say, boom, I gotta you know can make a digital twin. It's gonna be impossible if it's not registered properly. So you can see here every single uh, line in different color represents the platform that it was scanned on. So you can see uh, all the data from the aqua blue line and yellow is really homogenized very very well. So yeah. Um, Switching on to different sensors, so this has been a popular platform for a lot of our users out there. Uh, it's unmanned platforms, and these systems are very complex, right? This is beyond just a, a laser scanner. So you got you know, your camera, which is your passive sensor, which provides the RGB values to the uh, LiDAR point cloud. LiDAR is only black and white, as we all know. And then, of course, your RGB provides not only RGB values to the point cloud, but it also adds another level of detail and another level of recognition of the of the data, right? So sometimes you're not able to recognize a certain object, but if you look at the images and you can cross-reference it by looking at the RGB images, then of course you have other um, platforms and 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 um, accessories on an unmanned system that that makes it uh, what it is. And I really like to show this off because it's really neat on how systems are flown, captured, processed, and which takes all these uh, external and then internal sensors to make it happen. And of course, our terrestrial system is much more, uh, has has a lot of unique and complex integration components in there too as well. But I didn't want to show that off today. I really like looking at this, so I just want to share this with you guys. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because the next application I see is a digital terrain. Now, this is a quick video, which I'll play really quick. Yeah, so this is a uh, an example of a digital terrain model, which in my opinion, it's also a digital twin, right? So we're not making a digital twin of a building or a facility, but 
this, in my opinion, is just as valid, right? So this is just important as anything else out there that's man-made. Um, so it all depends on on your application and 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 what uh, your definition of a digital twin. But I think a digital twin opens up a bigger picture for me than just a uh, man-made facility or object. So this is a great. Um, this was captured by an unmanned system too, as well. And now you know when we go back later on, uh, we can then compare the same area uh, using survey control so that we can uh, see the difference and changes between the original data set versus the time that the, the next time that it was captured. And then with this, we can then use this to make decisions on you know where we need to uh, preserve or build or cut or fill from as well. Another great example are man-made facilities. So uh, not only that uh, digital twin could be uh, understood as a um, facility, but it can also understand as something very important like a substation, right? So these substations are extremely important uh, to make a digital twin of, right? So this thing provides power, power to, to, to this grid, and this grid distribute powers to local cities and, and homes and, 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 and city blocks and such whatnot. So yeah, it's very important to, to understand the digital twin goes much more than just a uh, facility too as well. Yeah, so here's a great example from a 3D point cloud captured by a laser scanner and then to a CAD model too as well. So here's a platform that I use which is uh, Topodot, Certainty 3D, uh, some of the resources that I use. And then that's the info you want to get more information on how this model was made uh, from Point Cloud to, uh, of course, CAD. And there it is with CAD, Point Cloud overlay with both. Right? So digital twin, substation, I think that's a no-brainer. Okay, and here's your standard um facility uh for uh, digital twin so this image is courtesy of autocad uh we don't have autocad we don't cad anything out although we, we have we have the knowledge but we just don't have any cad platforms here to to make this so i just got this thing online as well but it's the same principle so uh if you want to bring uh our data in there of course the export format will be les lez or e57 and then of course you import into uh, Recap Pro, and then from Recap Pro, it spits out an RCS file, which is a scan file that contains the actual spatial indexed uh, point cloud data, or an RCP file, which is the project files that contains the entire project of the um, um, of, 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 of yeah, all the data, the scan position of the entire project, the entire region of the scan project. So, yeah, and uh, so if you work in a Regal platform. Uh, unfortunately, you will not be able to export RCS, RCP. The reason why I'm using AutoCAD because a lot of our customers and, and there's a lot of audience out there that uses AutoCAD. So I just choose AutoCAD, um, Autodesk really. And to get into Autodesk, yeah, again, unfortunately, we don't um, export in RCS, or RCP. So therefore, you have to bring it in Re Recap Pro. And if a Recap Pro, it generates the RCS, RCP file. But using E57, LES, and LAZ, that's what we can export out of a regal uh, companion software okay yeah here's another uh example of from cad to um uh, sorry from point cloud to cad this is a uh, facility this is an arena um yeah the detail can be endless um the detail is 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 is, is as good as the the model right so how well the model wants to be uh of course the, the ladder capture is going to capture it all but it all depends on the cad work too as well so it goes both ways, right? So capturing the data is one thing. Of course, you got to model it and then and then and then tag it and then make it virtual for that you can share it with the other people. And then later on, I'm going to show you a good viewing platform that we can offer. And and that's a big thing is that not only do you have this data, as I mentioned earlier, you have to be able to share it, right? So uh, here's an example of mechanical room from CAD from uh, from from CAD. Sorry, from from point clouds to CAD. Uh, and you know, this is like I said, it's 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 it could be a fine line between digital twin and BIM, but I think digital twin provides a little bit more detail um, uh, information on versus BIM. Uh, I think when you go to digital twin, it involves everything within a facility uh, versus a BIM. So a BIM is 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 a big information management. Um, you know, you're asked you're asked to capture like existing structure above ceiling, right? So you can get a BIM model out of that, but too as well, but. I think a digital twin goes in a little more detail uh, compared to a bit. Yeah, and then forestry, right? So as I said earlier, I think um, um, digital twin is, is beyond just, just, just the X, Y, and Z within a man-made facility. I think it goes into a forestry too as well. So there are layers 
in in forestry that that we don't really uh, consider, and we just see the beautiful or not beautiful jungle or Amazon or forests or such like that. But there are layers of information there that will um, that that are used to make important decisions, just like estimating um, a, a, a carbon, right? So carbon pollution, right? So a lot of studies are used using vegetation and also sea vegetation too, as well. Um, but uh, above ground uh, vegetation is 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 widely used and studied uh, for for carbon emissions and, and global warming and such and whatnot. And um, but there are layers of information within a forestry uh, environment that I think is very important that a digital twin should definitely be considering uh, using uh, for forestry management. Uh, here you can quantify uh, the amount of, uh, for example, the trees, the volumes, uh, the height, uh, and the positioning. Of, of each area. So you can see here a quick report, the number of trees that are in this area. Uh, and all this stuff is automated too, as, as, uh, for example. Uh, and then, um, yeah, the, the output was right, the, the area of the, the median, the, 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 uh, the mean volume, uh, the total volume. So these are all very important that we're able to quantify to be able to make decisions um, and be able to, to access it quickly. For, for 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 management purposes and, and the decision making purposes and for future building purposes too as well yeah so like I said forestry management is a big thing when it comes to a digital twin in my opinion okay and here's a great example of all the layers that you can detect uh, 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 with a digital twin right so it's beyond just a visual line of sight I think uh, I think with with using the type of the correct ladder technology and the right correct ladder systems you can really see and, and, and extract and, and create different layers within a certain environment. So you can see here's a beautiful model of a terrain model, a ladder model, a vegetation model. And just so that you can also calculate and quantify the, the, the changes over time too as well by having uh, these, these digital twins is this ongoing scanning, right? Up-to-date scanning, up-to-date models. You can really predict and make decision and assess the area, um, uh, the important areas and, and that, that you need to uh, make decisions from too as well. So moving towards the end of my presentation, again, this presentation is only 30 minutes and um, I wanna show you guys, so th this information is great, right? So we have to be able to share it. We have to be able to to, to make sure that, that people uh, can have access to it. And of course, it was not feasible to give this data set to everybody. It's not, right? It's too heavy. Uh, people don't know how to use it. Um, they don't have the computer to handle it. Uh, they don't have the a storage facility to handle gigs, sorry, um, terabytes of data, right? So you have to be able to view it somehow, you have to be able to share it somehow. So of course, online is, a, is, is one thing, cloud is another thing, but I think a lot of people are, are, are could be apprehensive to put their stuff on a cloud. So I think an online viewer is a good solution as well. So here's a quick example of a facility um, that has been, uh, updated and viewed online. Uh, of course, we don't send the data to nobody. But let me switch, switch, switch my my screen to um, to a different screen so that I can show you on how we're going to be able to share this. Yeah. So hopefully you can see my screen now. So here is a top view uh, of a uh, oil and gas uh, facility, right? So all these positions. So for example, of a management or a maintenance guy wants to look at the north north end of the facility, uh, such as right here, one of those is one of those tall stacker. Um, you know, he can see, he just click on there. And then from here, he can see the facility as it is, right? So, you know, for maybe he wants to measure, for example, um, let's see. Oops. Oh, and also I also want to mention that there's different type of views too as well. So if you want to, and then uh, this is the a height view, right? So this is all just custom made views. Um, there's a color view. And of course, if you want to move into the next position, and, and this and this viewer is, 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 is very intuitive, meaning that you, you don't need to be an expert on how to rotate in 3D. You can just, uh, it puts you in the position of the user. Sorry, it puts you in the position of the scanner so that, you know, you can, oh, I'm having a warning sign, right? So, of course, <laughs> yeah. These, uh, 
It happens very slowly. Yeah. So here's an image view. We go to the next position. Uh, you can see, um, you know, so sharing information is also important so that we can easily um, share this database. And this is this is simple because if I was internally, I can um, I can I can share this link. All I have to do is copy this link and send an e an email to another facility that's on my network, and he or she just clicks on that and it opens this this viewer on 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 a uh, web browser, right? And all the updates made through the web browser, so the user doesn't have to uh, install any kind of link software or anything. They just have to literally open up that uh, a link that I sent them and then they can have full access to what I'm seeing right now, this, this link right here. And then of course, from here, uh, you can do all kinds of neat things such as create cross-section plan views, take measurements. Although I don't see for some reason, my measurement tool is not in here. So, but you can see uh, going back to my uh, previous slide, um, you can see here, uh, not only I have a data readout, there's the elevation easing northing. I also have a way to measure, uh, take quick measurements. I have vertical, I have slant angles, I have horizontal distance. I, have, uh, I can also do markups on I beams. And then from here, you know, I can just send it, this thing to anybody and they can view it. Um, so yeah, so this is a great way to view the data and share the data within a digital twin model too as well. So last week, uh, I think two weeks ago, I did a, um, a dis discussion panel with uh, for GeoWeek, and and I did it with a company called Wolpert and Drone Deployed, and um, and then the two gentlemen uh, were on the same discussion panel with me. Very insightful, um, and we we had a great time uh, doing it. I, we had some very good questions, but I was able to extract some questions out of there, and I thought they were good questions that I'll share with you guys. Yeah, so. Some of the questions that they asked for us is that uh, with so many potential contributors to the digital twin, uh, who ultimately owns it and, and who is responsible for, for the upkeep, right? So it, it, it all depends on how you on on on, on how you um you, you you look at it, right? So for a small company um such as ourselves, our facility, we're able to 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 do the update and upkeep ourselves. Right, so our company facility here is 16,000 square foot. Uh, we're expanding more next door and everything. Let's just say by the, by the end of the, the day, we have a 30,000 square foot facility. I think that's manageable to do it internally, right? So of course we gotta we gotta hire the the, the guy that maintenance our building, and you know now we're gonna outfit him with a scanner or a camera or whatever sensors we we, we choose to use, and he or she is gonna continue to update this facility and this and, and then manage it, and 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 everything will be housed internally. But when you're talking about doing it for a client, maybe the client don't want to handle all the facility. Maybe they don't want to own the data. They just want to have accessibility at a at a fingertip, but at a click of a finger, they want to be able to access their thing. Well, in that case, you know, you can manage it holding it from a cloud, and then send and then send simply sending them a, a a viewer just like the one I just showed you, so that when they need something information access, they can just boom access it directly from a web server um, and such like that. But yeah, but ultimately. Uh, I, I think, you know, uh, who owns the data? I think the person that paid for it owns the data. Uh, I think the data should be sensitive and should not be shared with anybody, uh, especially um, you can view it for permission, uh, but I think ultimately it has to do with the the, the person that, that requires a digital twin to be modeled um, as well. And another question is the digital twin requires a lot of time and expenses up front. How do you sell it, right? So, so how do you sell this? Like, why do people want a digital twin? Well, my opinion is accessibility. To make decisions that's the, should be the number one key in selling this how easy and how accurately and how effect, efficiently i can access the data right so that's the concept right i, I think for the client hey we can have if, we, if i can have information especially in a gas and oil facility at my fingertip i think that's its volume and is worth it's, it's the way to go on its own so that's it and the last thing i want to leave you with is this through our provisions of accurate spatial data that specialists are able to make informed and calculated decisions that inevitably improve, improve future outcomes. Thank you very much for your time. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free, and I'll, I'll I'll try my best to uh, to answer them. And if you want more information on on or want to discuss more about uh, or have 
inputs or or uh, critiques about my presentation, feel free to to share it with me. I, I I love them. They want to makes me a better presenter the next time, and it makes me um um it helps me out with my content next time. So um, I'll just give it another couple minutes, and if uh, I don't have any uh, thing come through, and then uh, yeah, we'll just uh, leave it there, and hopefully you guys join back for my next webinar. And let me know what what you want me to present on too as well. I'm 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 open to all ideas and any ideas. Of course, my my specialty is on terrestrial laser scanning. Uh, that's my division. So, but um, yeah, if there's something that you guys want that it involves airborne platforms, I'm willing to um, let my colleagues know. Uh, uh, viewing this type of data. Okay, okay. Do you do? You, okay, I have a question that came through. Awesome. Do you think AR is the future of viewing this type of data? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think AR and VR, uh, augmented reality and virtual reality, is the future of bringing this data. Yeah, of course, because if you have a digital twin, you have information that is covered inside of walls underneath ground. And if you capture it now accurately, if you capture it uh, well enough, if you document it and preserve it well enough, if you make it shareable, absolutely AR is the future with this type of data. Absolutely. That's a great question. The the I think Although I think it's the future, but it goes both ways, right? So yeah, I don't think the, uh, capturing accurate data is one of them. I think the technology has to be there too as well. And I really do. I, I really think the advance of technology, and especially uh, with the transmission of data speed, right? So through a, uh, a, a, a cell network, I think that also has to increase too as well to be able to make uh, AR, VR adaptable and uh, usable and efficient, use it efficiently. I think that uh, the speed of data transmission has to increase. So. But nevertheless, I really do think it's coming, and I do think it's going to be there. And I do digital twin can benefit from uh, AR and, and VR. All right. Well, hey, Cody, thank you for your questions. Uh, thank you for your comment and your feedback. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you next my next webinar. And uh, yeah, guys, hey, enjoy scanning. Have fun out there, and have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Cheers.